1996, the composer André Werner was commissioned to write a contemporary opera by the Munich Opera Biennale Festival. The opera was premiered in 2002. Right from the beginning, before writing the first note or the first line of the libretto, the composer included us media artists in the development of the whole project. Our task was to create an interactive stage and dynamic costume design in close cooperation with him during the process of writing. It was clear from the outset that the goal was not to develop a new narrative art form or to celebrate technology on stage. Instead, we were seeking to extend the traditional disciplines of stage and costume design with the help of interactive media to support the storytelling. The libretto of the opera is based on the play The Jew of Malta, written by Christopher Marlowe in 1590, and which was rewritten by the composer. The play takes place mainly in a monastery, so our first step was to find a contemporary metaphor for this. We came up with the idea of a Second World War bunker, because the monastery and the bunker are both shelter and prison at the same time. The next step was the development of a concept for bringing the synthetic bunker onto the stage, to create a three-dimensional and dynamic architecture. We came up with three large-scale rear projection screens. Because it's not possible to project a holographic volume onto the stage, as we see here, we decided to project only the intersections through the virtual bunker, which are defined by the position and dimensions of the screens. These intersections, or clipping planes, gave us on the one hand an interesting abstract starting point, and on the other, it created a highly three-dimensional architectural impression. To test the concept, a 1 to 10 model was created with three rear projection screens, three projectors and three PCs, each computing the intersection plane through the bunker according to the position and dimensions of the screens. To enable interactivity, we glued the movement of the bunker to the body movements of the main character, Machiavelli. If he is moving forward or backwards, the whole architecture follows him. If he is turning around, the whole architecture is turning according to his movements. Technically, the protagonist was tracked by an infrared camera feeding a bitmap tracker, which enables the protagonist's exact position on stage to be determined. By computing his centre of gravity, and the vector between this and the furthest point from the centre, it is possible to interpret his gestures. Here, the protagonist Machiavelli, he is able to change the whole stage set by only moving his arm. And here, an example of how he could move the whole synthetic stage purely by gesturing. A powerful impression of three-dimensionality results from the concept of intersecting the virtual architecture. We have chosen to give Machiavelli the power through interactivity because in André Werner's adaptation of Marlowe's play, Machiavelli is the central figure. He considers himself as the creator of worlds. He thinks the world moves according to his plan, and he believes he is determining the actions of the other characters. The architecture itself was not completely pre-modelled. In some sequences, the architecture was generated in real time, based on a plant growing algorithm. Beside the generative interactive architecture, we also extended the traditional costume design via new media. The goal was to project the inner condition of the singers onto the outer skin. To enable this technically, we developed a highly complex system which allows us to project precisely only onto the inside of the character's visible contours.
they were able to move and the projection follows according to their continually changing positions and movements. To allow this, the actors are dressed in infrared reflective costumes and illuminated with infrared light. An infrared camera was pointed onto the whole stage and produced 25 high contrast images per second. From this, an algorithm was creating masks into which a texture is applied. The final image was then projected onto the actor from exactly the same standpoint as the infrared camera. This system was used from two sides, allowing the projected image to wrap around the whole actor. One of the many possible applications was this scene, in which three Jews want to convince a fourth to pay his taxes. The moment he seems to be convinced and is approaching the other three, he gets the same texture as them. The moment he doesn't agree, he loses the texture. Because we had up to four actors on stage who could be projected upon, we had to develop a rather complex system which allowed us on the one hand to identify where each actor is located, and on the other, where the outline of one actor ends and the next begins. To enable this, we used four cameras, two from the sides, one from the front, and another one from above, which allows us to generate a real-time 3D volume model of each individual actor. Here you see the images from the four cameras. Here is the real-time 3D model, which is generated out of these, and allows us to detect where each of the four actors is located, and which actor overlaps the others. This information allows us to detect where one outline ends and another outline starts. Here is the resulting projected texture from the left, and here from the right. And here again, the final result on stage. As we mentioned at the beginning, the technology we developed was the basis for a content-driven interaction which had one main goal, and that was to support the narrative statement. Machiavelli, as the dominant figure who steers and leads the play, had interactive power over the media stage and the media costumes. In the beginning, he can control the whole stage using different interaction principles, as seen in these sequences. As the opera progresses, Machiavelli loses his power, which is expressed by a loss of his interactivity with the stage. In fact, in a short period of time, the other characters are also able to interact with the stage, usurping Machiavelli's power. At the end, even the stage takes control over itself and starts playing its own solo, leaving Machiavelli completely powerless. Machiavelli's decline is also exposed by the loss of his power over the costume projection, which in turn symbolises his loss of power over the other characters. When the actors take off their white infrared reflective costumes, they reveal black costumes underneath, which can't be detected by the camera and therefore can't be projected upon. When this process is finished, the characters take control of their own destinies, and Machiavelli's power is broken. He is demeaned and ridiculed by the other characters. At the finale, he is alone, and the central theme of the play is brought again to the forefront. The power struggle between the three world religions, Catholicism, Islam and Judaism. Machiavelli is torn between the religions, which are represented by three coloured and textured tables. At the end, Machiavelli also loses this struggle. 
and the religions grow to fill the whole stage. <laughs>